What's up boys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm finally gonna help you guys in defending one base Ravager Islands. I've been getting this request for a while to be honest, but uh, I just never played against it for a pretty long time uh, until now. And I think uh, I did a very textbook good defense that I'm gonna show you guys. Now, my opponent Garitos here, mid GM Zerg, played in, in GMAC last season. He's gonna do proxy hatch Ravager. And the defense I'm gonna show you works against both pure one base ravager all in so making the eggs here or the the ravagers here the roaches there and from our proxy hatch like the response is exactly the same i'm going to teach you some things to scout for and stuff um, in this game i'm just going to be going for the hyper expand reaper expand the hyper expand the hyper standard reaper expand uh, 16 barracks 16 gas scp scout is uh, crucial uh, as i always tell you guys in my video uh, we don't skip scp scouts anymore uh, and in TVZ, we, we can scout pretty early in TVZ. Like, we don't have to sacrifice money early on by scouting. I always just scout at the barracks. Sometimes I, uh, I see you guys scouting really early at like 17, but honestly, in TVZ, there's no need for that. Uh, the only thing you really want to see is if it's a hatch first or not. And in this case, it's, uh, well, I guess it is a hatch first, but uh, not, not in its own natural, at least. So basically, if you scout like this, uh, the normal scout, you send the one that finishes the barracks to the other side of the map. And then you rally the 19th one from your command center to make the natural. This is the most standard way to do it. Um, and why this is just perfect is because your SCP arrives just before your Reaper finishes. And then you can decide what to do with your Reaper. For example, if you would meet a regular pool first, which means the hatchery would be like yellow, orange. Uh, then you could choose to keep your Reaper at home or not. If you see no natural then you're 95% uh, sure already that it's a one base roach all in right and you're gonna see the timing will work out just perfect reaper almost done scv arrives now in this case this is already 90% sure a one base roach all in but you should wait a little bit with making the bunker until you see the the drone count because there is actually a build, and I think it used to be just the memers that did it, but there are recently I also think Dark did it against Beyond. And they basically just take this hatch first, and then as you respond at home, um, they take this as their third very fast, and then they just have three bases. So you kind of want to check on that drone count first, uh, not really any hurry. Now, the drone count for one base Ravage all in is 13 drones always and you can see what it looks like there's barely anything mining on minerals uh, and if you see this this is a 100 percent all-in this cannot be not an all-in like they have to do an insane amount of damage there's also a version where they can have more drones if, if, let, let's say you see four more drones here and and you might think well isn't it hard to count the drones it's actually pretty easy because as you can see uh there's just nothing here like this is a very empty mineral line uh, there's four in the gas and there's nine on minerals, no drones here. So this is pretty easy to recognize. If they do have more drones, uh, there are some differences you can make. For example, uh, you can never hold this command center against the one base Ravager all in. If they do have like four more drones, then this command center can just finish and you can just lift it off after the pressure. Um, but yeah, most of the time it's gonna look like this and there's nothing. Then in the case that it doesn't look any, any weird at all, if they actually have a lot of drones, only one gas, then they're probably doing the version where they just took this third base uh, and then you can uh, you know just continue as normal into a macro game but anyway in this case we scouted a one base roach all in scouting the roach one in, in this at this point is not even important because you can see the drone lines so the very standard uh, thing to do is to make first of all absolutely no add-on on the barracks if you make an add-on on this barracks you're probably screwed because you can tell it's just too late. Roaches are going to start now. You have one marine. Imagine if you have a reactor building. That means these ravagers will be roughly uh, here by the time you get to make any more units. So absolutely no add-on. Just marines from the naked barracks. And then you make one bunker on each side of the mineral line. Now, you can delay the second bunker for a little bit. And the reason for that is, is that he needs to morph ravagers first. So you have this bunker, it's gonna, uh, you know, deny the roaches from just walking up and do stuff. And then by the time he has ravagers, this one should be finished. Now with that, I don't mean that you shouldn't build it when you have money, but I mean that you can build your factory uh, before the bunker and you don't have to like 
completely completely cripple your unit production because this factory is also going to be important later on now i always like to keep the cc up a little bit because sometimes uh it can indeed be hard to scout if he has 13 or, or 15 drones like maybe maybe you're playing a weirdo who makes two more drones with his one base roach uh it's kind it's kind of hard to read those things sometimes so in that case you might actually be able to finish the cc so i tend to keep it alive a bit but if you play against the proper one base ravager uh, you can't keep it up so having to cancel this uh, that's completely normal it doesn't put you behind at all that's just what you have to do so if you lose this one uh, yeah, don't feel bad about it i just i like to keep it up maybe he will attack it for a while with his roaches instead of pressuring me you know uh, but you have to cancel it anyway then obviously the next step is to get the tech lab on the factory and from that point on you have two choices you can make cyclone or tank uh, in general cyclone is the most popular but i actually feel like tank is the most solid and i'm gonna explain that to you uh, when he starts getting ravagers then for you uh, at this point this situation is completely fine if, if you scouted it you have your bunkers up tech levels going up uh, for me i already consider this a pretty hardcore winning situation for terran but keeping the reaper alive uh, is actually kind of important for follow-up scouting and things like that because uh, when when there's like ravagers in front of your base when they do the proxy hatch there might even be a queen here i don't think the queen is standard by the way but uh, whatever he has a queen there uh, it's kind of hard to leave your base with anything else to know if he's actually still making ravagers or not but this reaper is going to give you 100 information if he took the natural and if he's making more drones as you can see here i still told you guys uh 13 drones is the normal count he still has 13. Y you can be hyper hyper safe uh hyper defensive against this i mean like there's no hurry you don't have to get your natural out yeah you, you're not you're not the worst to do anything as long as you live you're winning and this reaper can just keep confirming if he has a natural or not if he still only has 13 drones or not and it's not like you need to be super active with it. Just like, you know, you can keep it around like this. I'm, I'm not using the Reaper perfectly at all. Um, you can also scout this, by the way, this mineral line. Then back at home, uh, the defense is pretty simple. Um, this, is, this is one of the downsides of the way I wall off. Is that uh, Ravagers can buy all both. So I'm just going to save this one. But it's no biggie at all. Bunkers are going to keep me safe forever. You always do need to pull SCVs to uh, defend the bunkers, by the way. In case he goes for the bile, you always want to have like six SCVs repairing your bunkers, whichever he attacks. Now, in this case, uh, he realized he wasn't going to break me, so he started uh, making more drones, as you can see. He actually made them here. That's why I said this is also an important location to scout. Uh, but normally, you just defend with the bunkers. It's important that you pull these SCVs. For the first three ravagers, you're probably not going to need it right away, but uh, you really want to make sure none of your bunkers fall. Then the positives and negatives of a cyclone and a tank. What's really good about the cyclone is that it can kill the overlord a bit easier, denying vision. Uh, what's bad about the cyclone is, is that it doesn't have sustained damage because a cyclone dies pretty fast. So the only time it's useful is when it has a lock on. So if you have a bunch of ravagers here, you lock onto this one, it pulls back. And that's your cyclone useless for, for a good while, right? Where if you have a tank, you can just siege it here. Uh, he can't come close because you have these two bunkers. And it will just do sustained damage and he will never be able to push. Uh, he's going to have vision though. Uh, and if you siege your tanks too close, you could lose it. But what I really about the, uh, that's what I really like about the tank. That it's like sustained damage. Uh, you don't really have to micro a shit on with the, with the tank or anything like that. It's just safe. Where the cyclone is only useful with, with the lock-on. If the zerg micro as well, it can be hard. But honestly, both are pretty viable. Uh, I just prefer the tank. I think the tank is the easiest hold. Then from this point on, honestly, uh, it's pretty open to how you like to play. You can even make a starport right now. You can make a third command center. Now, you, Terran is already winning really hard here. Like We're really not in any trouble at all. We have 27 SCVs. And don't forget... This is the only place you, you can actually drone up. Uh, so yeah, like it, it's not very nice, you know. Especially if we take our natural at some point. Now, I usually t prefer to go with the CC follow-up. But I think beyond this point, um, you can play however you want. I used to play a lot of one base all-ins. So you get the second gas a bit faster. 
the starboard a bit faster. You make marine tank banshee. Because uh, look, look at what the Zerg's army is. After all this time, the Zerg has one Roach and four Ravagers, and he's only on 20 drones. So if he ever wants to get a somewhat comparable economy, he has to only make drones. And this, this is, you see, it looks kind of stupid, right? This is going to be his entire army for the next minute or two minutes. And it's actually very hard for them to su survive a one base all in. But you can also just uh, hyper turtle, stay with your bunkers until you have a bunch of tanks. Uh, you could make a third command center, prepare for a real macro game. You can make a raven to kill the creep tumors. I think here I, I felt like uh, I was going to have an easy time. So at some point, here's my reaper. I did, this is actually going to help me a lot this game, by the way. Reaper scouts uh, no natural. But I did scout that he had drones. I'm pretty sure I scouted uh, this location too. Uh, with the drones. And I knew he was making some drones. So that's why I unseaged. I was going for it. I realized he wasn't going to have any units. And uh, this way I can just take my natural very fast. I'm not even microing very well here, but... You know, sometimes when when uh, when I'm winning or when you guys are winning, you probably all get lazy, right? So I'm gonna go on to make some banshees. Uh, one tip I can give you guys is when you do take your natural, it's always really good to get a bunker here because pretty much the only thing that can be scary for you here is if they make a lot of speed links because speed links are generally really good against small groups of units right um especially against like unseach tanks and things like that and since we don't have hellions the only thing that could really catch off guard and, and win is a speedling flood so what's a really good thing to do is to actually get a bunker here on the low ground uh just like this because a, a bunker will just completely shut down any speedling attacks now what i'm doing here this is a bit of uh, a pro gamer improvisation i wouldn't recommend doing this like this is kind of yolo uh, I felt like I had a perfect read on the game and I just killed his Ravagers. Uh, so I just wanted to go up and kill some of his drones. But uh, this is a bit more on the risky side. If you want to be adventurous or uh, play like me, I guess, then you can do this. But generally, I wouldn't recommend this, especially not if they're Scree. Did a bit of show of micro here and there. But uh, if you want to secure the game, really, you, you go take your natural in time. Uh, this is actually what I did as well, going for a third CC. And you can see... Uh, my eco is already uh, just a little bit better than the Zerg. And then I'm going to land my natural and transfer 11 of SCVs. And I have my third coming. And yeah, honestly, playing against this, it comes down entirely to just the early game defense. You know, getting the raid, getting those two bunkers up, uh, going for a tank or a cyclone. Because, you know, sometimes I'm sure you can lose one of these games, maybe. If you're unlucky and you mess up, but... This position is so good for Terran that you can really do uh, pretty much whatever you want. Like, I can lose all these tanks and I wouldn't mind. Because I have more stuff here, even making a Banshee. I don't think making a Banshee is pretty good, by the way. Um, not to harass them, but just in case they have, like, some leftover Ravagers. Because if you move out with just Marine Tank, like, let's say you want to go across the map. And he has Ravagers, he can just keep biling you, keep biling you and delaying you. And if you have one Banshee... Even without Cloak, uh, his Ravagers have to run to safety or, they, or he loses all of them. So, I don't think making one Banshee is pretty good. Uh, like I said, you can also make a Raven or Banshee and Raven as you wish. Uh, and going into Bio is definitely better than going into Mech. Because Mech is a composition where it has a pretty long build-up phase and it's very weak early on. So, if you have to transition from this point into Mech where you have like... You have no cloak, you have no hellions, you don't have your gases yet. Mech becomes pretty bad. So even if you're ahead, if there's one thing I would not recommend you to do is switching into mech after this. Like just play a nice bio game. Um, use your advantage with like Stimpak, Medivac, stuff like that, you know. Fast mobile units and uh, don't try to transition into mech from here. So I'm pretty sure he's probably going to surrender the game now. I'm making another bunker for safety. Bunker is like the best thing you can make against Zerglings, by the way. So if you're ever afraid of like a Zergling flood, you don't necessarily have to make Hellions. Um, if, it's, if at some point you decided to make a React on the barracks, you could swap the factory in the barracks to make some Hellions. But uh, you can also just make a Bunker, because a Bunker is really good against uh, Zergling floods. Getting my gases up. You, you can see how funny this game looks, because I just threw away a bunch of units and I have like <laughs> this eco. And I even have more army supply than him, two bunkers. 
Yeah, I think he's just gonna let me speed it up because I'm pretty sure nothing interesting happens for the rest of this game. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Well, guys, if you want to look at the replay a bit more slowly, once again, I'll post it in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this guide and video. And I hope you guys never lose to this again because I think this build's pretty bad. Um, don't get nervous. Keep your, uh, keep your nerves in check. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe and see you guys next time. Adios.